Hi everyone, welcome along to another one of IVHQ's webinars. Today, everything you want to know about volunteering abroad in Latin America. Uh, pleased to welcome our guest today, Chelsea. Chelsea, you're in charge of all our Latin America programs here at IVHQ. Yes, I've been working for IVHQ for about five years. I've traveled extensively through Latin America, so I have a lot of experience. Fantastic. It's great to have you along. And uh, obviously today we're going to be chatting all about volunteering in and around uh, Latin America. Um, we're going to answer questions like, do you need certain qualifications, uh, the type of projects that are available for volunteers as well, also stuff like what's the weather like, uh, do you have to be fluent in Spanish or Portuguese, and uh, what's the internet access like, and all those different type of questions that we get on a, uh, on a daily basis. So like I say, all the questions that this webinar is based on is questions that you and your team would get on a daily basis, but also in the uh, uh, the community team as well uh, across all our social media platforms, questions that we see a lot across Facebook and, and across Twitter as well. Um, so we're going to be answering all of those questions and a bit more uh, in today's webinar. So thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching us live, uh, thank you for, uh, for coming along. Um, we do have a team on standby right now answering all your questions. There is a chat box just below the screen here today. Uh, so if you do have a question during today's webinar, feel free to ask that question and a member of the team will be able to answer that straight away for you. Otherwise, if you're watching the pre-recorded version of this on YouTube, uh, you're more than welcome again to, uh, to write a comment below uh, with any of your questions. And again, a member of the team will be able to, uh, to get uh, those answers to you uh, in the comment section below as well. Uh, we might as well get into it anyway today. Uh, just so you know, IVHQ to date has 10 volunteer programs across eight countries in Latin America. So tell us about those different destinations. Sure, no problem. So we have a program in Mexico, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Brazil, and Argentina. And actually in two of those countries, we have two programs each. In Colombia, we have a program in Bogota, as well as Cartagena. And then in Peru, we have a program in Lima, as well as Cusco. So obviously, all the countries are quite varied, so the information can be quite different depending on where you choose to go? Yes, it's covering, a, I guess, a big span of distance, so they are very different from each other uh, geographically and culturally, but also the programs themselves are very different. Okay, perfect. Now, there's obviously a lot that you've got to plan and think about when you're even considering volunteering in Latin America. So we're going to start with some of those commonly asked questions here today. One of the big ones is... Uh, vaccinations, um, you know, what, what ones are required, what would you recommend as well before you do travel? The first thing I'd recommend, uh, particularly with health and vaccinations, would be to go visit your doctor. Um, ideally around four to six weeks before you're due to travel. It's really best to discuss any vaccinations and your entire travel path as well as your health needs with a doctor. Um, they'll help you make the best decisions. Vaccinations and other medications are obviously a personal choice and it's different from person to person, so rather than hearing from us what you need, it's best to chat with the doctor and make those decisions for yourself. And would that be the same for things like altitude sickness? And yes, so altitude sickness is something that periodically comes up in our programs in Bogota, um, Colombia, as well as Quito, Ecuador, as well as Cusco, Peru. Um, so it is good to think about that um, in advance. I guess the hard thing with altitude sickness is that people don't always know how their bodies will react. It's a hard thing to predict unless you've been in a high altitude before. Um, my biggest piece of advice for that is just to take it easy in your first few days. I know when you're in a new place, when you're you know traveling, it's hard not to get excited and go out and exert yourself when you first start, but really taking some time to give your body, um, I guess, a chance to acclimate as well as staying hydrated. Um, eating starchy foods also helps. Um, also, there's usually coca leaf tea, um, which is really good for helping your body get the oxygen levels correct. Sounds good. Now, as we're talking about um, health, obviously we also think about safety as well. So in, in general, how safe is it to actually volunteer in Latin America? And um, I'm, I'm guessing, obviously, volunteers, they receive a lot of support from the local team as well. Absolutely. So on all of our programs, our volunteers get 24-7 support while they're in country. That may be someone in person or someone on call in case of emergency. But it's actually really unlikely that you'll ever be alone. Um, obviously, you have other volunteers around in addition to the local staff, in addition to members of the community and you know the staff at your placement that you'll be working in. So you'll have a great network of support around you should something happen. Um, but in terms of safety, my biggest piece of advice is just following the instructions of the local team um, and the advice that they give you at orientation. Um, as long as you're following that, you shouldn't run into any problems. And as we're talking about safety, obviously, uh, the other thing that comes into that is, is travel insurance. 
you know, obviously, do we do we need travel insurance before we take part in the programs? Yes. So travel insurance is required for all IVHQ programs. That is a, a mandatory thing that we ask all volunteers to get. We do recommend going with World Nomads for your travel insurance. They offer the coverage level that's perfect for our volunteers, and they actually allow you to extend your policy in country should you decide to extend your program and stay longer. So they're very flexible, um, and they have great coverage. So it's a good option. Sounds good. And Obviously, there's a bit of paperwork involved with, with insurance, uh, with travel insurance, but obviously, you've also got to think about visas while you're doing that paperwork as well. Now, in terms of visas for traveling and volunteering in Latin America, is, are they easy to get or is it a difficult process? Actually, Latin America is pretty lucky uh, because a number of nationalities actually can just arrive in country and get a stamp put in their passport on arrival. Now that does depend on your nationality, so it is a good idea to check with the nearest embassy of that country um, you know, while you're at home before you go to make sure that you're all set. The one exception to the rule would probably be Brazil. Uh, they often require a tourist visa for entry. There are some, I guess, details that need to be provided in order to do that, and we're happy to help you through that process. So the best thing to do is email your program manager after you've applied online and we can guide you through that process. Perfect. Now another um, topic that a lot of people talk about when they are planning uh, to volunteer abroad is money. Um, now what would you recommend that volunteers do? Do they take some cash with them or is it best just to, uh, to use a card and an ATM for example? Are they readily available? Yes, in most cases, ATMs are readily available. We'll provide the information in advance if that's not the case for the destination that you're going to. Uh, in terms of money, my biggest piece of advice is to do a little bit of time kind of formulating a budget for yourself so that you've got an allocated expenditure each week and that you're prepared uh, financially for what you're going to embark upon. Um, but an ATM is the best way to go. It's way safer than carrying a large sum of cash with you. Now, while you are in transit to the country initially, it is a good idea to have a few hundred US dollars on hand for emergencies. Then when you arrive in country, if you have any of that left over, you can actually get that exchanged for local currency, use that, and then from that point forward, just pull money as needed from an ATM. Sounds perfect. Now, another hot topic, or cold, depending on where you uh, choose to actually volunteer in Latin America, is, uh, is the weather. Um, is there really a best time to visit and volunteer abroad across Latin America? Um, well, it, it's expanding across two continents, so obviously the weather is going to vary uh, dependent on the time of year and location, as well as the geography, so the mountains will be colder mm -hmm. than the beach. Um, so what I would say is do plenty of research. It's difficult for us to say what's good or bad for each person because obviously people have different thresholds in terms of their comfort level with different weather. Um, so just to get an idea of perhaps the temperatures at the time you're going to be there, the rain patterns, that sort of thing is really important to pay attention to. Um, but I think there's really no such thing as bad weather, there's only bad gear. So as long as you come prepared, um, particularly with layerable clothing, uh, then you should be just fine. And that leads quite nicely into the next uh, topic, which is obviously a packing list. What do you pack? What's the absolute must things that you need to have in that, in that bag? Well, we do provide a packing list in our program information after you register for the program. And sometimes for specific projects, there are specific things that volunteers need to pack. So first and foremost, always read your information booklet for the packing list as there might be some special things in there for you. But generally speaking, um, I would say comfortable shoes. So obviously you might want some of you know, nice shoes to go out with in your free time, but you also want some comfortable shoes for walking around as well as your volunteer work. In addition to some clothing, um, I guess that you don't mind getting dirty or potentially ruining in your volunteer work, as well as some clothes for your free time to go out. Um, and on top of that, I'd say the other thing to keep in mind is that a number of places in Latin America have somewhat more of a conservative culture, mm -hmm. particularly in women's clothing. So, um, for instance, in some of our child care and our teaching placements, it's really important that the ladies have their shoulders covered mm -hmm. um, and their chests covered to a reasonable level, um, obviously no cleavage. Um, and then as far as the bottoms, it should be at least um, skirts or shorts that go to the knee, if not um, pants. Uh, but we can advise you further on the specifics for your project it's a great question to ask your program manager once you register how about any items that just just leave at home there's no need in bringing anything like that um, everybody has their own idea of what are the essentials yeah. for me personally I tend to keep a lot of the 
um, cosmetics, the hair dryers, the flat irons, that kind of thing. Um, at home, I don't carry it with me. It's just less stuff to um, to pack. But I guess the other thing is as well as I try to pair up things that I know can make several different outfits by mixing and matching, and it keeps the clothing to a minimum. Sounds perfect. Now, we also do get a lot of questions, obviously, around the just the day-to-day -day life of a volunteer in Latin America. So we'll kick off with, firstly, arriving at the airport. So um, when you arrive at the airport in this new destination, there's going to be someone there to pick you up? Yes. So airport pickup is provided on all of our programs. In a few cases, dependent on when you arrive, um, there are recommended times to arrive mm -hmm. in which airport pickups provided. Outside of that, sometimes volunteers would then need to make their own way to the accommodation if they you know, arrived several days early or something like that. We'll provide guidance on that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but it's a very easy process. You unboard your plane, you pick up your luggage, you go through immigration and customs, that sort of thing. Going through the arrival gate, there will be somebody at the airport waiting for you with an IVHQ sign. Sounds good. And then obviously I'm guessing they're going to take you to the office or the accommodation. And that's another thing that we get a lot of questions about is, is what type of accommodation to expect in Latin America. So for example, is it homestays? Is it more dormitory style? And also, are you, are you going to be alone or is it uh, are, you, are you going to be with other volunteers in your accommodation? It's a mix of both. So we do have some destinations that are solely homestay, um, some destinations that are solely volunteer house, which is dormitory style, um, and then some that actually have a mix of both, either dependent on the project you work on um, or the availability at the time. Um, if you have a preference, you can certainly request that. We can't guarantee it. It just depends on what's available at the time the local team will always do their best um, but yeah it is it's uh, both are available and it's an important thing to keep in mind when you're choosing the destination for you perfect and how about food that's uh, obviously a big part of travel for a lot of people and uh, experiencing a new culture what type of what type of food can we expect great food um, <laughs> Latin America has incredible food um, and it really varies from place to place, so that's a, a really cool part about it. Um, I guess one thing to keep in mind is that uh, you probably get a mix of some traditional meals as well as some Western meals just to keep things varied. Now that said, um, starchy food is very common in Latin America, particularly beans and rice, lots and lots of rice. Um, and sometimes also, you know, tortillas or bread or more of the starchy food, carbohydrates. So something for people who are gluten intolerant or celiac to keep in mind. Now we can cater to that. Um, same goes if you're vegan or vegetarian. You just need to let us know of those dietary requirements in advance and the local team will do their best to cater to that. Now because of the, I guess, predominant starch in the diet, it is a good idea if you do have dietary restrictions to budget some extra um, cash to just purchase some of your own diet appropriate snacks while you're in country to supplement the food provided to you. Sounds good. Now, another big question is communication. And uh, one of the biggies, of course, the internet. What is the internet like? Will I be able to connect to any Wi-Fi? How am I going to be able to chat to my friends and family back home? Cool. So I guess across the board, the easiest way is probably internet cafes, which are available in all of the destinations mm -hmm. we work in. Um, some of the programs do offer accommodation Wi-Fi. The challenge with that is sometimes with a number of volunteers on the Wi-Fi that it can be kind of unreliable. Um, in other cases, the local staff will have Wi-Fi at their office, which is free for volunteers to use in their free time. Um, but I'd say, particularly in the more developing countries, um, the communications infrastructure isn't always that strong, so you shouldn't expect the same quality of internet access that you have at home. Sounds good. Now, obviously, we're going to be uh, going to Latin America to, uh, to volunteer. So can you tell us a little bit about the, the different projects that are available and the different projects that volunteers can contribute to? There's a wide range. So we do have some projects that are available in most of the destinations. Um, examples of that would be childcare or teaching English. Uh, we have a number of construction and renovation projects as well. Um, then we have some, I guess, destination specific conservation projects that are quite cool. So some examples of that would be turtle conservation in Costa Rica, which is very popular. Um, we also have jungle conservation in Cusco, Peru. Uh, and then another really cool one that we have is Maya Agriculture, which is based out of our Mexico program, uh, where the volunteers work on reforestation and some traditional farming techniques. 
techniques, which is quite a cool project. Perfect. And what, what type of qualifications are needed to, uh, to take part in the majority of those projects? It really depends. So I guess the most common one for qualifications would be our healthcare projects, which I probably should have mentioned previously, um, but that's okay. So generally speaking, the majority of the Latin America healthcare projects are open to pre-med and pre-nursing students mm -hmm. and up. Um, the only exception to the rule for that would be our Peru-Lima healthcare program, uh, which requires volunteers to at least currently be enrolled in medical or nursing school. Um, now the other somewhat common qualification requirement would be Spanish speaking ability. Mm -hmm. So Argentina healthcare, Peru-Lima healthcare, both of those projects do require at least an intermediate level of Spanish. And that's just due to the communicative nature of providing patient care. Um, and then additionally, in some of the teaching English projects, it's not necessarily required, mm -hmm. but it is recommended because it helps make the curriculum a little bit more relatable. However, we do have, I'd say, the majority of our volunteers don't speak Spanish, um, and that's okay. We have a number of projects that's just fine for, um, but I would strongly recommend taking the Spanish lessons that the local team offer. Um, I think you'd be surprised in how quickly you can pick up quite a bit of Spanish in that environment, and it really helps you communicate in your placement as well as in your free time. Perfect. Sounds good. Now, the other question um, that we had was, kind of for volunteers to be able to get to these projects and placements because I'm guessing obviously not all the projects are going to be right near the volunteer house or the volunteer accommodation. Um, so how do volunteers get between the volunteer house and where they're actually going for the day to the project? Most of the time it's done by public transport, mm -hmm. uh, most commonly bus. Um, generally speaking I would recommend budgeting around five dollars US per day mm -hmm. um, for your commute to and from your placement on via public bus. Now in some cases if you're um, in some locations it may actually be more cost effective to team up with the other volunteers in your placement and share a taxi each day. It really just depends but I would just count on probably taking a bus and spending about five dollars a day. So you mentioned about teaming up um, with other volunteers so that so you're most likely to be volunteering with other with other people as well or is it yes are you going by yourself in most cases you can expect to be paired up with at least one other volunteer mm -hmm. in your project at the same time some of our projects also work in shifts so there may be some volunteers there in the morning and then they change out with some new volunteers in the afternoon um, periodically we do have volunteers who are in a project by themselves mm -hmm. but those tend to be the volunteers that are very excuse me skilled and qualified um, and maybe have a very particular placement sounds good now and when you first arrive I'm guessing um, during that initial week where you're first going to your project you're going to get a bit of support from the staff uh, introduction to the placement and and the, the kind of tasks required for example absolutely so you actually get two orientations when you begin the program the first is the overall program orientation mm -hmm. where they go through everything with you um, some language some customs the safety precautions um, you know, just going through everything that you should expect in the experience and how to conduct yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. But then also, in your first day on your placement, they'll actually make the commute with you via public transport to make sure that you're comfortable with getting there on your own and that whole process. They'll introduce you to the staff and the other volunteers at your placement, make sure that you're comfortable with the role that you're being asked to perform, um, and that sort of thing, there to help answer questions. Um, and then they're also always there. They'll check in on you periodically um, in your placement, and they're they're you know twenty four seven on call as well should you need them. Sounds great. Now, the other big thing with traveling and volunteering in Latin America is the um, the the different travel opportunities that you have in the weekend. Now, this is going to be a tough question, but what would you recommend? What are the must do things if we're going to be anywhere in Latin America? What are the must do things that we're going to try and fit in during the weekend? Oh, that's hard. You could probably fill up a few years <laughs> doing that. Yeah. Um, I'd say some of the really popular ones among our volunteers would be obviously Machu Picchu um, out of Cusco or Lima, Peru. It's accessible accessible from both of those places. Um, that's You can't really go to South America without hitting that up. Um, that one you can usually do over the course of a weekend, or if you really hurry, you could probably do it in a day. 
Um, it depends on the person. Um, also, the whole city of Rio de Janeiro um, is just incredible. Um, it's very vibrant, incredible beaches, and so much culture, the food, the dancing, the music, it's really unending. Um, also, Mexico has some really beautiful, you know, ruins um, and a lot of culture there as well. So Chichen Itza, um, as well as Tulum, which is not too far away, are also really great spots. Awesome. Sounds great. Now, is it easy to be able to get around uh, Latin America? For example, if you did have a spare weekend or you, you wanted to do a bit of travel after your program, for example, um, is it easy just to to get around, you know, and go see different parts of the uh, of the continent? Absolutely. So particularly with our longer term volunteers, it's really common to go do extended weekend trips to the neighboring country. So um, that's really common. Uh, they also sometimes do that to do a border run for visa purposes if they're on a 24 week program or something like that. Um, but very easy. And in fact, I would even recommend while you're volunteering in one destination, Perhaps try it out in the next country over if it's an option. Mm -hmm. um, that's often the case, and the flights in between countries within Latin America generally are pretty inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So why not seize the opportunity if you have it? So your team can obviously help if uh, if, if a volunteer did want to combine programs, for example. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sounds absolutely fantastic. Now. Uh, so that, that's pretty much how we're looking uh, when volunteering in Latin America. And you can take our word for it of how fantastic it's going to be and how um, how the experience is, is just going to be wonderful. But obviously sometimes you're going to want to read some reviews on some external websites and, and different platforms. Where would you suggest uh, to go, like websites, for example, to, to read up on other people's experiences of volunteering with IVHQ in Latin America? Goabroad.com, mm -hmm. GoOverseas.com, um, Volunteer Forever okay. is another one. Um, but also I would recommend um, you know, looking us up on Facebook, mm -hmm. not just the specific IVHQ page, but um, within some of the country-specific pages, because you can actually talk to volunteers who have participated in the program in the past, potentially even volunteers who are currently there, or volunteers who may even be there at the same time as you so that you can you know, meet some people, start networking, and maybe even coordinate some weekend trips while you're at it. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of stuff out there. Sounds good, and you can find those groups just by going into Facebook, uh, searching IVHQ, then followed by the country that you're interested in, and uh, you'll be able to access all those groups. If you do have trouble finding the groups, you can obviously get in touch with the team and we'll point you in the uh, in the right direction. Uh, well, thank you so much. Anyway, um, I think we've run out of time uh, with today's webinar, but thank you so much for providing all that uh, information um, about uh, volunteering in Latin America. And we hope that you really have found this uh, this webinar useful today. Now, if there was a question that, uh, that we didn't get to answer today that you're uh, really interested to find out, obviously you've got a team standing by ready to, uh, to answer all questions here. Yeah? Four people just waiting to answer some questions, yeah, Sounds make perfect. suggestions. So uh, if you do need some advice, you need uh, any type of questions, if you're not even accepted or uh, applied for a program yet, uh, feel free to get in touch with the team. There's a couple of ways to do it. Obviously, if you have applied and you've been accepted onto a program, you can contact your program manager. They'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, if you're still just researching and, and looking at volunteer programs, if you go to our website, volunteerhq.org, now down at the bottom of the website in the, the right-hand corner, you're going to see a little chat window. You can uh, click on that, you can uh, type in your questions, and uh, and then our team will be able to answer those questions or put you in touch with someone who will be able to help you from uh, from there as well. Uh, again, we hope you found this uh, really useful. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here today, and thank you, Chelsea, for, uh, for coming along and sharing all your uh, information and wisdom. Thanks for having me. And uh, hopefully we'll see you at, uh, at another IVHQ webinar very shortly. Cheers, guys. Bye.